That was a nice uh, warning by the way. So um, I we have the people down. Hmm? We have the people down. I mean, we, we, yes, we started, so we're putting we're the your, people we're down. Your guy. Um, hold on, where do I get to put them? Her. We're going with her, even though it's uh, okay. non gendered. Um, I'm going to go it, the right hand, like bump out right above the right hand bump out, right most bump out. I need to like name her and everything though. So I haven't done that part. Should we do like an intro? <laughs> <laughs> so you're like two, there's two hexes between us. Is that right? Yeah. Mm hmm So um, the tinkerer is really good at range stuff. Like all of my all of my abilities are ranged type things. So I'm just trying okay. to be like as far from the bad guys as possible, the monsters. What am I gonna um, name my character? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> what an <laughs> intro or naming characters? Well, probably both. <laughs> <laughs> we're just here to play games we're not here to actually teach anybody anything <laughs> <laughs> okay i guess i'll start i'm mark i'm playing this person man you can't see anything oh there the contrast is better yeah a human scoundrel which I haven't named yet. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Melissa, and I'm playing this person. Can you see? It's a quatrial, quatrial, quatrial tinkerer, who also doesn't have a name. So <laughs> let's do that first. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm gonna name it. I'm gonna name her, as we discussed. Uh, I usually use Latin names for various animals to name my characters, and I can't think of any off of the top of my head that makes sense. Like I should really do like a bower bird or something like that that like builds its own nests. There's your lesson. I am super nerd about biology. Um, <laughs> hold on, let's Google the Latin name of a bower bird. That sounds great. Oh lordy, that is the the bowerbird Latin name is Tillonorinchidae. That is not how you say that, but that is the. Oh, here we go. There's an Archbold's bowerbird, which has a way less exciting name. I'm gonna go with. Just Tilo, which is P T I L O, and that's totally the name we're going with here. P E T I L O. P P P T I L O. And that means Bowerbird. So Tilo. No, that's the way shortened version of the family name because the long the the full version is. Uh, way longer than that. And I'm not going to say that every time I mention my character. Okay. <laughs> what, what are you going to name yours? I go with? Oh, and for those of you playing along at home, I scanned the uh, character sheet and the, and the party sheet into my iPad so that I can change things without erasing all the time. Well, without erasing and ruining paper all the time. That's fancy. I'm using this. <laughs> it was a game. <laughs> Human scoundrel. Um, I'm going to name her Foxy. 
<laughs> we can see the level of play. I'm glad you put the level that of maturation the between the players here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tilo and Foxy <laughs> taking on Gloomhaven. <laughs> Um, and I've got leather armor. Oh yeah, I've got my eagle eye goggles for anybody watching. Let me make sure that I write this down. I just went with the default ones. Yeah, me too, because I don't really know what I'm doing yet. So I just yeah. bought some goggles and that used up all of the money. So you get, when you start a new character at level one, you get 30 coins, 30 right. gold. And my 30 gold paid for one thing. So. Well, they look snazzy. Yeah, they do look snazzy. I'm totally like a um, steampunk dungeon runner here. Awesome. Yeah. And I've got some sort of like um, glowing Iron Man thing going on too. See, I get like an Iron Man keep the shrapnel out of my heart bit. Mm. I don't know if that actually works out to any coolness, but whatever. Right. Here's my character. Glowing eyes. That's sweet. I don't know why the glowing eyes. She's human, but maybe it's like, I don't know, magic or cyberpunk or something. Who knows? What's, what um, items do you have? A leather armor and a minor stamina potion. Cool. So the leather armor is, um, I can tap it to basically, the monster will draw two cards and then the worst one will be applied instead of the, you know, instead of. Oh, cool. Card. Um, and then the stamina. So mine gives me a kid. Oh, I can recover like these, uh, cards. When I use oh, nice. Version. So my goggles give me an uh, advantage, so I get to draw two cards and use the better of the two instead of the worst of the two. Nice. Is it persistent, or do you only get to use it once, or what? Um, I have to rest to use it again. So I use it, and then I, if I rest, I can tip it back up. What's our party name? We have a party name? Yeah, we can have a party name and location. If we're going to play the whole campaign, I want to get the reputation bonuses. Oh, uh, yeah. OK. This thing? Yes, that thing. Where are we? We're in the Black Barrow. Black Barrow. Um, why don't you keep track of it? Because you have that. Okay. What's our party name? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it could be a, a mashup of our names. Of the names of the characters? Yeah. <laughs> um, Pexy? <laughs> Petixy? Petixy? <laughs> sure, Petixy. And I think our reputation starts at zero, so I'm going to put us at zero. Okay. It didn't say anything. Well, it maybe it said something, but I didn't. I don't remember it saying anything about how to do the reputation. I'm I'm assuming we start at zero, though. Yeah. Do you think we need to pretend we actually have an audience and try to explain things, or just like, or just play? Um. I you have a massive mug, like, but I also have a massive mug. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't even my big mug. This is my normal mug. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was going to sort of talk out my thinking, but otherwise uh -huh. just play. But like, do you um, think we need to introduce the game or anything like that? Um, we could say a little bit about it, I guess. Because it's Mark and Melissa in the morning. Um, okay, so we are playing this game called Gloomhaven, which I kickstarted and I've had this copy for like two years and I haven't even played it yet. <laughs> and, uh, um, it's basically a dungeon delver 
where we control characters and we're moving through the, um, you know, map tiles that have hexes and we go and fight uh, these enemies and stuff. But then between these scenarios, there's like a um, a town that we can visit. And um, I think the two things that make this game interesting, um, one is that it has an interesting way to um, handle combat where you, where you pick cards, um, where you pick two cards at a time and, and, and you'll see how that happens in a sec. Um, but then also the map that you, um, the stuff that happens between scenarios um, is you can, you can permanently change, I guess, the world um, that the game takes place in. Um, so there's a map and there's stickers. So it's like a legacy game, like Pandemic Legacy, where you put stickers on to different places on the map that you've unlocked and stuff like that. And you can you unlock um, new cards to put into the various decks, and you unlock new characters and, and things like that. So I think that I think that's sort of what makes this game um, unique, and and probably is why it's really popular. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's um, and you can get sticker packs so that you can like start over again with a new crew and things like that. So you can you don't have to. So I know a lot of people who, when they do their legacy games, they'll use like markers and things like that, and then they can't ever play it again, which is problematic. Obviously, if you want to like start over from the beginning. So the nice thing about this is that it's all like removable stickers that you can take off. And put. I haven't tested that, so don't hold me to it that it will come off easily and then stick back on easily. I am suspicious that it won't, but but I am looking forward to finding out. Um, the other thing that I find interesting about this is just it, it feels like Bard's Tale, like the original Bard's Tale, but analog. So, you know, you're exploring but you're exploring much smaller pieces. So Bard's Tale was like giant. It was open world before we knew what open world was, right? Because you could just go wherever you wanted and you just would die if you did it wrong. Um, and so this has a similar feel um, to it, except for obviously we're playing on a table um, and all of the like computer side of things come in in this giant rules book, the rule book of doom. But <laughs> really exciting rule book just a lot to remember. So when you see me looking at the book, it's because there's way too much to remember. Yes. I went to Board Game Geek before this. I went I went there yesterday to look at the various things that there are. There's a um, rules cheat sheet, uh, which is like 11 pages long. <laughs> <laughs> That's the cheat sheet. <laughs> that is... Not really a cheat sheet. That's another whole rules book. <laughs> right. Well, actually, so so um, I should say that the actual rules cheat sheet part of it is about six pages, and then the other pages is all glossary. Because <laughs> there's all these different effects and stuff like that 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 might happen, so you need to know what those are and everything. Do you have one of these? It was in, I found it in one of the card decks. It's like actually all what all of the different effects are. No, I don't have that. Or I didn't find that. Where did I, I found it in one of the decks. I don't know. I think the one, um, hold on, let me look. I think it was, yeah, I think it was the front of this, the deck that has the like, um, choose your own adventure, the, to make your own dungeons. So yes, that's another thing. You can make your own dungeons, look. Gives you a way to randomly make new dungeons. So I'm pretty sure you could play this game possibly forever. I don't think I have that deck. Really? Oh, I must have gotten like version two then. Yeah, I mean this, I definitely have the first version because I kickstarted the original. Thing. Yeah, I put it on my wish list when it was kickstarting because at the time I didn't have money. <laughs> um, so I must have version two. Okay. So we're going to use Mark's as the definitive edition and mine as the just so that I can see what's going on without having to squint to the screen version. Yeah. Um, and hopefully they're not actually different other than like things like that. I think I might have just like maybe more scenario. 
I am fairly certain that they didn't change any of the mechanics. Mine did come with a, um, one of the Kickstarter rewards it was like a, a book of solo scenarios. Oh, cool. I don't have solo scenarios. I have a, a thing about how to play solo where you control two characters at once. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then you have to make things harder because you know what the other person is doing because you are the other person. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I have, a, I have another booklet um, um, with like custom scenarios just for solo play apparently. Cool. Um, okay, so this setup. So like there's certain things we need to do and I don't know, really know the order of things, but um, we need to, characters should have a, like a quest that they're going after, like an overall quest that once they achieve, they retire. Yes. Um, and I believe that's this deck here. Yes. So I'm shuffling it right now and I'm going to draw one for me. And I guess ask Melissa to look away and I can show the yes, I'm not looking card at to the audience and then I'll draw one from for Melissa without looking at what it is. And then she can find the same card in her deck and that way. Yes, because be I have sync. my own deck. Yeah. Okay, so I'm drawing mine. Uh, and Melissa's not looking. I'm gonna show really quickly. I have no idea if this is rendering on the camera. Okay. Oh, and for anybody who's thinking about buying this, you will probably want to get the organizer, even though the organizer is expensive. I tried to make my own organizer and the box won't close. So <laughs> you really might want to get an organizer that's made for the game. <laughs> uh, the box, like it's, I put the lid on and then I wiggle it down as far as it'll go and it's not all the way at all. <laughs> my box is just going to be open, I think for, <laughs> I'm just going to leave this open. Yeah, um, I have okay. a seven-year-old, so that's not going to go. Okay, let me see. I'm now drawing a card for you and not looking, but you need to tell me if it's within frame. Um, yes, it's within frame. I, I've got it. You got it? Yep, I got it. Okay, and I'm going to, I guess, bury it at the bottom of the deck and like never look at this deck again until we switch characters. Yes. Okay, so there's that. And then we also need a battle one yeah. using this deck. Yes. Because there's, there's career goals and then there's scenario goals. So we and we pick two and choose one, right? I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, we draw two and choose one. Yeah. Okay. That's gonna be harder. I'm gonna have to show you them one at a time, I guess. Okay. Or maybe at the same time. Well, for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna do mine first. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay, so the one that I didn't choose, do I put it back in the deck and shuffle? Or do I discard it um, before drawing your two? I think I just get the next two, hold on. I think that probably makes sense. It probably doesn't matter, huh? Probably doesn't matter. And I am not seeing it 
quickly. Let me just draw two. Okay. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything obvious, which just means that I'm not, oh wait, here we go. Mm. It just says each character receives two and chooses yeah. one to keep. Um, we'll just discard both of mine and I'll find the one that I want to keep. Yeah, so I'm not gonna look. You have to tell me if you can see them. Um, yep, I got it. Okay. I have to read them now, but. Yep. I don't think I can do either of these. Um, I'll just pick this one. Do you want me to show the which one I picked? Did you show, show which one you picked? I did. Okay. Wait, did I? No, I didn't. But you can show okay, it and then I'll show I'll do show mine up. first. <laughs> okay, your turn. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, okay, so we we have our goals. We have mm -hmm. our character set up. We have our little XP and hit point things set up. Um, mm -hmm. The how do we? Uh, so I wasn't super clear on how we figure out our starting hand. Is it the whole deck? So you choose. So for me, I get I get twelve. Um, I get 12 cards, and as it turns out, all of my level one cards equals 12. So, yeah, all mine are the same number that I have, which is nine. Okay, so I think we just take them all, and okay. that's your starting deck. And what's interesting is it works kind of like um, uh, there's this other game, Mage Knight, that has sort of the same thing where, uh, or um, what game was it? The number of cards in your deck is basically your hit points. Oh, that's interesting. Sort of. Or in this game, that's sort of like your stamina or something, or your, mm -hmm. um, you know, because we have health hit points. But then if your deck ever runs out, then that means you get exhausted also. So it's almost like a second stat to try to keep track of, right? And the reason, and the fact that you have, oh, so it's like um, the, the Pathfinder adventure game. Or, mm -hmm. So it's like the fact that you get 12 cards and I get nine cards means that you have more stamina than I do. Well, that, I mean, that makes sense because my character mostly uses contraptions and stuff. So I'm not actually like Big getting learning. in there and getting 30. Yeah, I'm like. How many hit points do you start with? Eight. Me too. Well, you're supposed okay. to be sneaky, right? I guess so. I didn't actually look at these. <laughs> I assume um, that my character was like a like a rogue in World of Warcraft or or in D and D. Yeah, mine is more like um, it's almost like a shaman character in World of Warcraft because I can make traps and things, and then I can also I also have a few like elixirs and things that I can use to heal. So it's like a shaman style. Um, there are a lot of other characters we haven't unlocked yet. I'm hoping there is some sort of a hunter style thing in there somewhere because that's really, I'm one of those hunter nerds. I know there's not uh -huh. very many of us out there, but <laughs> that's how, that's my play style. Ever since um, Warhammer actually. But that was called a white lion back then, back in the day. Nice. Okay, so then, um... We choose two cards, right? Mm -hmm. That we're gonna play, and then we flip um, the monster cards over to see what their initiatives are and what their abilities are. Yes. Right? Um, and just so people know what we're doing at home, um, the cards look like this, where there's a number in the middle, and then there's an ability at the top and an ability at the bottom, and you pick two of them, and you pick one of the cards to be primary, and you're supposed to put them face down on a table after you've chosen the primary one on top. And then when you reveal them, whatever you chose as your primary card, you look at that number, 
and that's your initiative score. And um, whoever has the lowest one goes first. Um, mm -hmm. you know, the monsters will also have their own initiatives. And so we go in initiative order. But then when it's your turn, you can choose the top uh, ability of one card and the bottom ability of the other card um, to do. And you can do those in any order. And they don't have to be, like, it doesn't have to be the top of the primary or anything like that. Yes. Um, yeah, so that means I need to spend some time and read all these cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying oh, to figure so, out. Wait, maybe we should uh, describe the monsters that we're dealing with. Um, so we've got three bandit guards. Actually, you can kind of see on Melissa's screen better in mine. But, um, one elite one and two an elite. Elite. He's got a yellow uh, standee or whatever it's called and two regular dudes, and um, they have stats, and we're just playing on normal difficulty, I assume. Um, I was assuming that too, because nothing like going hard difficulty the first time you play a game. Yeah, so that means on the left side here is the regular, the stats for the regular guys, and then on the right side is the stat for the elite guy. Um, it looks like the elite guy has a shield. Um, So one thing that a friend of mine told me, this game, um, a lot of it is about trying to deny the monsters uh, the ability to damage you. Yes, so if you can go I, and I'm kill very them. nervous about damage because I only have eight hit points. And yeah. the, these bandit guards, the, the elite guy does three damage every time. Right. Assuming that the his attack modifiers don't wipe that out. So I'm super nervous about damage. Um, fortunately, I have heal cards. So I am hopeful. Um, the other thing that we should say is that we're not allowed to tell each other what we're planning to do, except for in really vague terms. So I can say like, hey, I'm going to try to heal you this turn. Um, or, hey, I'm going to try to attack the monster on the left. But I can't say, like, okay, all we need to do is four damage, so don't worry about that guy. So the, it's – and this should be even easier for Mark and I because we're not next to each other, so we can't cheat too much. Hopefully. Right. Or do you remember, do I have to use all of my move? If I have move, do I have to use all of it? No, you don't. Okay. I'm going to do that. And does it all have to be in the same direction? I guess that's the other question. No. Okay. You mean, can you like go two, then two back? Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Okay. It's not like checkers. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> that would make it way harder. <laughs> but I have There's to do it all rules, at once, like, right? I can't. You can, like, you can walk through uh, allies, but you can't walk through them. Right. But I can't do like, I couldn't do like move two forward, do something, move two back if I have a move four, right? I have to do it all at once. All the movement I at believe once. so. I believe you do. You do everything of one card and then everything of another card. Everything of the other card. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. I am ready. I think I'm going to die very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Shortest scenario ever. <laughs> well, because like, 
take that much damage. And there's three of them. And like all three of them are going to be able to attack probably. Like I don't think we can kill one of them. Well, maybe we can. Um, well, I have some. I have some pretty good um, modifiers. I are you gonna? Up. Are you attacking something? I was planning to attack. Yes. Okay. Are we allowed to say which one you're gonna attack? Oh yeah, I guess so. I'm. Um, I'm. I'm gonna try to take out the elite guy, if okay. I can. Um, it 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 will take me a while, but I, that's what I, where I was gonna try. Because he scares me most. Yeah, I agree. I was very sad when I saw we ended up with an elite in the in the first room of scenario one with two players. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Already? In that way, it's totally like Bard's Tale. Because in Bard's Tale, if you don't know what you're doing, you die immediately. Oh, man. Like, I don't know if I should just go in and attack or if I should just like, wait, how far can they move? The elite can only move two spaces. Unless he gets a, move three spaces. something from his from his um, from the modifier deck, right? The action deck. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It looks like a lot of a lot of my abilities like um, are more powerful if I'm standing next to you. So okay. So I might want to move next to you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So if you have an ally standing next to you, you do better? Oh, uh, no. If I if my target is standing next to an ally, then I do better. OK, so you want me to put myself into danger, is what you're saying. Yeah, maybe the scoundrel is better with like a tank character. As the maybe. Man. It's OK. We can totally make this work with two, um, with, with two back line. <laughs> We're two DPS characters, basically. Yeah. Although you can heal. Um, I can heal. And you know, if after this scenario we decide that it's... <laughs> well, if we, if we group wipe in scenario one, we, we try start again. over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we fire everybody and start over. <laughs> okay, I'm going to... And then we'll have the all tank party. <laughs> Okay. Um, this just stays in, I guess, what represents my hand? I think I'll put it right there. Um, let's see. Okay, so I've chosen my two, and I'm going to flip. Or should we reveal and then flip these? Yeah, back? I think we reveal okay. and flip simul somewhat simultaneously. Uh huh. So. The, the one in back is my lead card, the one with the 18 on it. Okay. Can you see? Yeah, an 18 and a 20, or I mean, yeah, so you can, yes, I see. Okay, so, so I have an 18 and a 20. Yeah, I guess, I mean, I, I guess the, the one that you're going with is the only number that matters. I'm going with yeah. 12. Okay. Cool. So one of them is like, you can be sneaky. That's a good call. And then the other Although, one is like, you can poison things. Nice. Yeah, I, um, I've got poison and stun going on on my one. Okay. I have to figure out which one I'm going to use based on 
Who gets to go first? So I'm flipping the guard card over. I already shuffled these. Okay. We get this. 50 and zero, 50. zero. And who does, that goes on which, on the elite. So that's the elite guy. No, this, this affects all the guards, I thought. I think you flip one for each guard, don't you? I thought it was all, I thought this was for all of them. And then the elite goes first. Oh, maybe. Yes. Yeah, just one ability card. You're right. Okay. I got confused about that versus the um, attack modifier deck. Yeah, you do draw one for each for the attack modifier. Okay. Okay, so okay, then so they I have the lowest. I have 12, so I'm going first. Yes. Um, I am going to... Oh, crap. Uh, so I, like, I, I, I'm going to do this one, turn myself invisible. Okay. With a smoke bomb. And on your next attack while invisible, double the value of the attack. Um, but I guess I just remember that I'm invisible. You can use these little guys. Don't you have these little guys? <laughs> I just put it on your on your person so I can remember you're invisible. Is that what that one is? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. So. Okay. And there's a little thing for conditions here. So I'll put it right there. Um, and then it also has this icon. Which I what think that means move, like I've just charged um, this oh. element. Okay. So All I'm putting it over here into the strong section. Okay. So there's this board. Right? Yep, I've got, I've got mine. So charged up at the night time. So that means if we have an ability that uses that element, we can use it, we can do it. I think that's what that means. Yes. Unless that means you require that in order to use it. No, um, to use it, it has like an X through it, I think. Like if you see a thing where it shows that symbol inside of an X. Unfortunately okay. for level one, so I'm not sure that we have much that will use things like that. Yeah. Okay, and then what else are you doing besides turning yourself invisible? Okay, then the other thing, um, um, I'm moving. So, so I use the top of the other card, so I have to use the bottom of this card, so I can move three and then poison something. Okay. Um, so, I don't know. That doesn't count as a as an attack, right? Like I'm gonna stay invisible, right? I think so. That's what I was hoping. That that an attack is actually like doing damage. Yeah. Does it say that you can't attack as when you become visible when you? Well, it says when you on your next attack while invisible, double the value of the attack. And there is no value because it's just a poison status effect. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm moving, I'm going to move a couple of spaces here and poison this uh, elite guy. Okay, so did you move just too straight forward? I can't see your board anymore. Yeah, just right in front of the, right in front of them. And putting one of the poison markers onto his little thing. Which, uh, he's on my screen, or on my thing, he's number five. So I'm putting it on the number five thing. Okay. On mine, he's just number one, because I didn't think it mattered. Um, since yours is the definitive version. 
Okay, so I get to go next because mine was 18, which is yep. much less than 50. Um, okay, and I'm going to do this in the other order since you just poisoned the guy I was going to put. Can we, can we put two poisons on somebody? I don't think that makes sense. Um, I don't think it does anything. Yeah, I don't think it does either. A poison is, a poison is you get extra damage when you get hurt, right? Um, yeah, so all enemies get plus one against, plus one attack against you. Okay. Um, so I'm going to do this slightly differently. I'm going to do this card, the bottom of it, but I'm going to use the move two, which just lets me discard it instead of um, losing it. So see the little plus yep, yep. two move. So I'm going to use that, and I'm going to move to this spot right here, right in front of the door. Okay. And then... My other card, I get to do attack one at a range of three and stun. So since he's poisoned, I get to do attack two and I pull a modifier card, which means I get nothing because it's zero, but I still get to stun him. So he's now stunned as well. Is it zero plus one? Like, do you do one damage to him because he's poisoned? It said I could do it in any order, so I guess... But I think that this modify. so if I do this and then I add my plus one, then I can do one damage to him, I guess. Okay. We're going to call it that because... It does say in any order. Oh, but then he's got a shield. Oh, that's so true. Oh, never mind. But he is stunned now. Where's my stun? Which means he doesn't get to do anything. Yeah, so he's now like useless for the moment. And uh, so when you get this one, you get to shuffle your your attack modifiers again. So I'm gonna okay. shuffle my attack modifiers. So he's stunned. He is stunned and poisoned. Which one is the stun icon? The um, one that looks like a like a firework. This one? Yes, that one. The, ex the small explosion one. <laughs> okay, stunned and poisoned. So the poison, the poison stays on until he heals himself? Yeah. Do they heal themselves? I don't think so. I mean, not, maybe they have a card or something that, that'll heal themselves. Okay. Okay, so now it's the enemy's turn. Right. And they go in ascending order. So um, this guy's number one, the guy on the left side since we stunned the the elite yeah right the elite's not doing anything um although i guess the stun marker goes away now right because they only stun one turn yes okay so then this guy uh moves three and attacks two right because i'm invisible i think he's i think they're both going after you yes they don't know about you. So he'll move one, two, three. Oh, dang it. And attack you. Dang right. it. And I have nothing to help with that, so I'm sad. Okay, and I'm drawing for him. He attacked he attacks you for three damage. Meh. And do it it does it, the fact that it's green mean anything? I don't think so. I am not going to survive the first room of the first scenario. <laughs> I'm already down to five. Five hit points. Okay, what's the other guy do? Same thing, right? One, two. Yeah. Um, he only does one damage. Okay. And half my hit points are gone. Sad. And now it's the next round, right? Uh, yes, we have to reduce the element strength. Whoosh. And yeah, that's it. 
Oh, wait, no, we can do a short rest if we want, right? At the end of your rest. Yeah, but that just means you get one of your discards back. So if you want one of your discarded cards back. Sure. I mean, why wouldn't I, right? Well, the other one gets lost. It goes away forever. What do you mean? So if you do the short rest, yeah, you, one of the two discards that you already have would go to lost and the other one would go back into your hand. Oh, okay. Oh, well, I only have one in the discard because the other one's an active thing going on. So I don't know. I'm I'm gonna wait to short rest until later. Okay. All right. So now we we choose cards again. Yep. Do you think uh, I should help you or should I go after the elite? Um, I think you can go after the elite because I think that what I just picked, um, I think, I think I'll be okay. Okay. I hope I'll be okay. Oh, I forgot to take his stun off. Oh no, he's about to go after me too. Dang it. Because you're invisible. Yeah, but maybe I'll go before him. Okay, fingers crossed. Okay. I've chosen two. Okay. I have as well. My right. leading card is a 17. Mine's a six. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. And then what do the monsters get? They get 35. Phew. Oh, move minus one, but range, they increase their range. Right. Ugh. Um, but I go first. Okay. So what I'm going to do is uh, activate this bottom thing first, which is uh, on your next four attacks, targeting enemies adjacent to none of their allies, add plus two to the attack. So he's not adjacent to anyone. So that's why I want to do that. Um, and then the top part of this card which is backstab, which is... Okay. Add plus two attack and gain one experience when the target is adjacent to none of its allies. Ooh, that's nice. But then I have to lose it. But it's basically, I'm going to be adding four <laughs> to the attack. Okay. Um, you also need your attack modifier. Right. Minus one. Actually, I think you attack modify for each of those, right? This one isn't a. This one isn't an attack. It's just oh, okay. setting up attacks. This one's a, a three attack minus one, okay. two, and then plus four, so that's six. Okay. And then times two because you're invisible, right? And then on your next attack while invisible, double the value of the attack. Yep. So it's twelve. Okay. So then he's dead. He dead. That was probably. <laughs> We just have to sacrifice me to do it, probably. Yeah, maybe that was overkill. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so are you he, done? He drops a uh, loot, right? He drops a coin? Yes, he drops a coin. Is this a coin? Yes. Okay. I think you have to stand on it to loot it, though. 
Yeah, I am done. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to attempt not to die. By um, so first, I'm going to do the bottom of this one. So I'm going to immobilize the the guy on my left, which means he can't move. And um, I'm going to move two. Um, shoot. Yeah, I'm going to move two sort of along the wall. Can you see where I moved to? Like along the wall. So just on the other side of him. Yep. Yep. And then I'm going to do restorative mist which is this top one, which is heal three. So I'm back okay. up to seven. And hopefully, hold on, there wasn't any attack on there, was there? Nope, and nope. Okay, so I am now done and about to die probably. Who did you immobilize? Um, I immobilized the guy I'm next to right now, whichever number okay. he is. You should have immobilized the other guy. Oh, duh. Okay. Well, no, what? actually, it doesn't matter because they have a ranged attack. They do have a ranged attack. But they get a disadvantage if they're close to me and use the ranged attack. That's true. So, so that actually wasn't that bad of a move because they have a ranged attack this time. Right. So this time right, right, right. Yeah. Head. Yeah, that was good. That was good. Okay. Phew. I totally meant to do that. I totally remember that rule. Okay, so this guy, because he's immobilized, he can't move away from you to attack you. So then right. he attacks you because you're closest. Yes, because he still doesn't know you're there. You're you're still invisible, right? No, I'm I'm, I'm visible now. Oh, okay. Um. Oh, your next attack while visible. I assume I turn visible now. It says on your next attack while invisible, double the value of the attack. I assume that makes me now visible. What do the little things below say? They're like... It doesn't say remove the visibility thing or anything like that. No, but you do get to experience. Oh, you know what? So you use it and then you... That that now goes into your um, uh, loss. Yeah, it gets, it gets lost, which means the effect is no longer there, right? Right, but you get two. You you get two experience now. I still have zero experience. I'm gonna die, and I have no experience. You're not gonna die because like this guy's gonna shoot you at a disadvantage, and then the other guy's gonna shoot me because I'm now visible. Oh, I guess you're closer. Yeah. Yeah. The monster. Okay, so this guy this guy shoots you at a disadvantage. So I draw two cards. And whichever is the lower of the two. And two times. So, so I one. plus zero, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and then what is their attack? Their attack is two, right? Is two. Okay, so I'm back down. And then the other guy is focused on you because... Yeah, the other guy doesn't move because... He's not at a disadvantage, and then just attacks me, right? And just draws I one. I think so, yeah. The focus is sometimes confusing. Yeah, he gets a plus one. Dang. So Actually, you get minus. When I drew this, it has this thing here. Was I supposed to shuffle the deck? I think now you shuffle it. Now or immediately after that one guy? Now, because you would have drawn both of them at the same time. Okay. We'll, so we'll say now. So then you lose three. Three damage, yeah. Three hit yeah. points. Unless I use my, um, you know, leather armor or whatever. Oh, yeah. I keep forget. Well, I haven't attacked anything yet. And I, so. Okay. Um, and now I shuffle these guys. Oh, and he's no longer immobilized. Right. And now we 
we can elect to do a short rest if we want. Yes. He's no longer immobilized. Right. All right. I am going to do a short rest because I'm hoping to get that heal back. That was a good heal. I lost my net shooter. Dang it. And then put that all back in my hand. All right, I did my short rest. Reduce element strength. And next turn, I guess. Okay. I am also ready. All right. Mine's a four. Mine is a 20. My guy goes fast. Um, and they have 30 plus one move, minus one attack. OK. OK, so uh, I'm going to move to Just move right there. Wait. Mm -hmm. Oh, whatever. I'll just move right there. Um, okay. And then, oh, wait, that was this one. And then I'm going to attack um, at five because. Uh, you're adjacent to it. Okay. So which um, guy are you doing? Uh, the guy that you're staying next to. Oh, okay, yeah. And then you got to do an attack modifier and la la. Yeah. Plus two. Oh, so, nice. Um, seven total. So he's dead. Yeah. Actually, it's nine total because of this status effect. OK, he's gone. Goodbye. Right. And I get uh, two experience for that. So this thing moves over one. And then the card gave me one. And that guy's dead. Um, and now it's your turn, right? Yeah, I'm trying to decide if I want to change what I was going to do. You know, what? I think I will. Okay, so um, I'm going to start with this one, which is a stun shot. So I'm going to, um, it does one attack and then stuns the guy. Okay. Um, so he is now stunned. And let me draw a thingy. Minus two, so I do negative one attack. That's ridiculous. So, so I've yet to actually attack. <laughs> okay, and then um, I'm going to heal you for two. Ooh, fancy. Do you, you don't need to be adjacent to me? Nope, I, it's a rate. I'm throwing potions at you. Okay.
And that's it. Okay, and he's done, so he doesn't do anything. Yep. Um, and we can do a short rest if we want. Yeah. If, uh, let's see. If I do a short rest, then one of, or it's a random one that goes away, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I did my short rest, I just mixed them up, and then I picked one and put it in my lost pile, and then I put them back in my hand. I think I'll, I'll, I'll wait. Hold on. Um, okay. Do you have enough cards in your hand? I have three cards. Okay. After this next turn, then you're going to have to take a long rest. What's a long rest? Oh. Um, the long rest, you heal two and... Uh, whoa. Yeah. Um, you lose one discard and recover the rest. You heal two and you refresh any spent any of your items that you used. No, at the end of this round we're about to do, I can do a short rest and get all my cards back so for one, right? Yes, that is also true. So then I don't need to do a long rest next turn. Um, I think that there's a rule that if you only have one in... Oh, no, never mind. Retracted. Don't worry about it. <laughs> if you start the next... Like, if you don't do the short rest next turn, then you have to do a long rest. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. I've chosen. I have also chosen. All right, mine's a 23. Mine is a 17. I get to go first. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and theirs is, or, uh, 50. So, zero, zero. Okay. Okay. Um, I am going to do this one first. It's an attack two with poison and... Um, we, the, the green one goes all the way up to Strom, so I'm going to attack him for two plus one, so that's attacking him for three. Uh-huh. Um, and poison him, so. Okay. And, and then... The other one is a uh, move two and then heal all adjacent allies. Nice. So I'm going to move to like. You move through front. this, so you gain the gold. Okay, cool. Do I gain the gold as I move through this space or do I gain the gold at the end if I'm standing on this space? Oh, I don't know. And you get plus one. Also, do I count as an adjacent ally or no? Adjacent to me? Do you it yourself says, count as an adjacent ally? Yeah, see, it says, can you read it? I don't think so. Okay, so I'm just healing you for, yeah. for funsies. Um, collecting loot. <laughs> I think you get it just by walking through it. Where the hell would this be? <laughs> it says end of turn looting. A character must also loot any money tokens on the hex that he or she currently occupies. Oh, so you know what? It was stupid for me to move too. I'm just going to move on to that thing. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. 
Because then you're still adjacent to me. Yeah, and you get, and you get a loop. That money. So it is, you have to end on it, huh? Yep. Okay. Okay, and now I'm done. Okay, and my two. Um, uh, I'm gonna do this attack three. Okay. The card I draw is a plus zero. Um, so that's three, but because uh, he's not adjacent to any of his allies, I get plus two. Let's move down. So that's um, five. And he was already hurt. And he's poisoned. And poisoned. So he takes six. So he's dead. Yay! Good job, us. We did not die in room one. Yeah, kind of amazing. Um, but now we have to walk to the door to set up room two. Right, and then my other thing has to be the top, thing, <laughs> I guess, which is nothing because it's an attack. Okay, so you attack, but you still get experience. Do you get experience if you can't do the attack? Okay. I think everything's supposed to still happen. Okay. Okay. We didn't read any of the flavoring text, by the way. Nobody knows oh, why we're here. Do you want to do that? <laughs> Just in case anyone was wondering what we're doing. What the hell are we doing? <laughs> do you want to read it or do you want me to read it? Um, maybe I'll read, I'll read the, the beginning of the campaign and then you can read the introduction the to the scenario. Okay. okay so Everyone needs to eat. Whatever your reason for coming to Gloomhaven out here on the edge of the world, that simple fact is never going to change. A mercenary can't fight on an empty stomach. So when Jexera, a Valrath woman wearing a red cloak and enough gold jewelry to keep you fed for a decade, approaches you in the Sleeping Lion and offers to pay you 10 gold coins to track down a thief and retrieve some stolen goods, well, it seems like as good an excuse as any to sober up and start paying off your tab. <laughs> This thief has taken some important documents, said the red-skinned merchant, her tail whipping about in agita agitation. I don't care what you do to him, just bring back what is mine. Based on Jaxera's description, it was easy enough to knock around a few alley thugs and get a location of the thieves' hideout. You don't find yourself as a mercenary way out in Gloomhaven without knowing how to crack a few skulls. So your target is the Black Pharaoh. Sounds like a lovely place. Nice. <laughs> And, and our global, we, the global achievement we're trying to get is city rule militaristic, which doesn't sound like a great goal to me, but. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, oh, wait, maybe that's the global achievement we get for starting. Yeah, I think, that, I think that must be the global achievement we get for starting. Right. I'll write that oh, down. we were supposed to put the sticker on, right? The black barrel sticker onto the map, which we didn't do. Let's handle that afterwards. Yes. Okay, so we are in the black barrel. Uh, our goal is to kill all enemies. Introduction. The hill is easy enough to find. A short journey past the new market gate, and you see it jutting out on the edge of the corpse wood, looking like a rat under a rug. Moving closer, you see the mound is formed from a black earth. Its small overgrown entrance presents a worn set of stone stairs leading down into the darkness. As you descend, you gratefully notice light emanating from below. Unfortunately, the light is accompanied by the unmistakable stench of death. Great. <laughs> you contemplate what kind of thieves would make their camp in such a horrid place as you reach the bottom of the steps. Here you find your answer, a rough group of cutthroats who don't seem to have taken very kindly to your sudden appearance. One in the back matches the description of your quarry. Take care of these unfortunates, he says, backing out of the room. You can vaguely make out his silhouette as he retreats down a hallway and through a door to his left. Well, it's not every day we get people stupid enough to hand deliver their valuables to us, grins one of the larger bandits, unsheathing a rusty blade. We'll be killing you now. Joke's on them. If you had any valuables, you probably wouldn't be down here in the first place. <laughs> And we killed them anyway. <laughs> right. I think we read, 
Oh no, we don't, we don't read this yet. Okay. Okay, so now we need to move towards the door. Yeah, well, okay, so that was the end of the round. I need to do a short rest so that I get some of the cards back. Oh, yeah. Do your short rest. I'm still good because apparently so like, I'm just carrying around a giant bag of random stuff on my back. Right. So one of these cards is just gone forever, huh? Yes, gone forever. Okay. I lost the initiative four card. Bummer. <laughs> Dang. I used a lot of my cards actually. I don't know if I should have used if I should have like used these cards. I've been trying to save my really good stuff for when we get to the last room where there's like a lot of bad guys, I think. Yeah. I mean the 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 I guess I overkilled the first guy. I did something like 13 damage to <laughs> <laughs> But then I, I used two cards while doing that. So I'm not sure I, that was a good move. But anyways. Well, it required 10 damage to kill him minimum. That's so true. I think you only did 12 damage to him, so I think that that's okay. Okay. Oh, wait. I forgot that this other guy that we killed also would leave a coin. Right. I keep forgetting to put the coins down when they die. There should be two coins now, one next to the door and one next to the guy, I mean, one from the guy we just killed. Yep. And we actually, you either have to play a loot card or stand on top of it at the end of your turn, right? To get it? Yep, those are the two things, yeah. I think I would, I want to save loot cards though for the end because there's like lots more treasure at the end of this scenario. Well, do you want to go for the door or do you want me to go for the door? Um, either way. There's no, there's no bad guys so we can kind of just like go whenever. Yeah, but we have to use our cards. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no bueno. So if we leave loot on the ground and don't pick it up by the end of the scenario, is it lost forever? Or do we yes, it's, it's like gone. get it all? Yeah, we have to we have to try to get it all because otherwise it's just gone. That's sucky. Yeah, so we need to make sure before we get before we kill the last bad guy that we loot any chests we find because otherwise then we don't get the chest. Yeah. And we're sure we actually have to land, we have to be on it at the end instead of just walking through it? Yes. It, we only loot at the end of the turn. Okay. Hold on half a second. Um, I'm going to kick the puppy out. Okay, the puppy now is out with everybody else. Our third party member who didn't do anything good. Right. So here's a question. I've been making an assumption that if it says heal three, I can use that on myself. Maximum. Yeah, not on my maximum, but if it doesn't say heal three self, I've been assuming that I can also use that for me. I think to so. To heal myself. Okay. Um, okay, I've chosen. 
Okay, me as well. When's a 10? 37. I'm gonna be a scoundrel. <laughs> so first I'm gonna move one space. Oh, you have to end your turn. God damn it, this doesn't make any sense. Okay, first I'm just gonna move two. And then I'm gonna attack nothing. <laughs> That's all I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I am going to move two over onto the other money. And then I'm going to heal myself three. Okay. So that I'm back up to full strength. I still don't have any experience. So healing me and stuff like that, all those healings and stuff didn't give you experience? Nope. Wow. No experience for me. Because I haven't been playing anything that like, I get experience for ones that I lose at the end and I haven't been, I've been trying to save up all my best stuff for later on in the scenario. Yeah. So... Um, Whatever. I don't know which ones to choose. Well, remember, as soon as we open the door, all of those guys are going to happen. Yeah. Are we allowed to look at what's going to happen? No, we haven't gone through the door yet, but we know that things are about to happen. Because there are going to be some guys, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I would choose. And they'll, they'll get their cards drawn as soon as we open the door so that they can go, so that they get a turn too. Right. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. I have 33. I have 61. Okay, 33, I'm moving. Uh, I guess I'm moving three spaces. One. Now, do they populate? And then I move yeah. more? Yes. Yes. Okay, so we have two regular dudes. Two of these weird things. Spiky traps. Yeah, those are spiky traps. Are they traps or are they? Yeah, they're damage traps. They're traps. Um, <laughs> and one elite archer. Mm hmm. Gosh, she has a long range. Her range is five. Um, is that thing behind her a treasure chest or no? I don't think so. Okay. I think it's supposed to be a uh, a chair or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a busted treasure chest. There's nothing in it. Yeah. Okay. It's been previously looted. Um, okay, so they their initiatives are ooh shit. The two guards have initiative fifteen. Eek. Okay. And then the archer has shit, initiative fourteen. I'm about to be totally owned. Um Yeah, because I go very much last. I finished my turn though, right? Before they 
Like they don't interrupt me. No, I don't think they interrupt you, but then they they'll go. They'll go. But I, I st I'm, st I'm in the middle of this move, move three. So one, I guess I could run back. Yeah, you could run back. Um, let's see, maybe I can actually kill them, kill one of them. That would be three, four, five. I can do five damage to one of them. Not enough to kill. It's not enough to kill, but it's enough that um, if I get close enough, I we're not supposed to talk this much about it, but yeah, you're right. No, I, I should run away because one. even if I don't kill one of them, there's going to be two that's going to attack me, and I don't know if I can want to do that. So I think I want I need to run back. So then it, and if you run around the wall, then you're not line of sight. Right, the archer can't attack. Right, so yeah, so that that'll be that's one, two, three, I guess. <laughs> okay. And then the other the other thing doesn't do anything because it's an attack. Okay. Does this so this one? Um, it's an attack. Uh, mm -hmm. It doesn't do anything. Do I still get the experience? Um, I don't feel like I know. I feel like maybe not because you didn't do anything. What would it say? Um, it would say under. Okay, an ability card cannot be played for the experience alone. You must use one or more of the accompanying abilities. So if you didn't do anything, you don't get the experience. Okay, so I don't get the experience for that. Okay, now um, it's their turn. Yeah, now it's their turn. So the archer goes first. Um, the archer has a movement of two and now has a minus one, so it's a one. And it creates a three damage trap in an adjacent empty hex closest to an enemy after it moves, I assume. So it'll move one and then create a trap. Where are these things? Does it matter what it looks like? <laughs> I don't think so. There, it's a bear trap. <laughs> where is it? Where are you putting it? Um, in front of it. Directly in front? Yeah, because it's supposed to be uh, the one closest to us, but it has to be adjacent to where he's standing. OK. Okay, so that's his turn. Mm -hmm. Two guards um, move three. So the first one is the guy on the left. Okay. So he's going to move one, two, three, and I guess block the doorway. Yep. And the other guy tries to move as close as possible. So it's like right here. Well, he can move through his guy, but yeah, if he, but not. He can't same. end up on him. Yeah, so I guess he would stop like right behind him since we're both in the other room. Yeah. Okay. Right, so I just stuck him right behind him. So, the, and they're not in range to attack, so they're not attacking either. Okay. So now it's my turn finally. And. Yep. Um, range of three. Okay, so I'm going to move one. Uh, towards the middle. And 
I am going to use ink bomb. Okay. So, and I'm also going to use my eagle eye goggles to get advantage. So this gives me an attack of four at a range of three to both of these guys. And let me see, I'm going to draw these two and I get a plus one. So um, I can do, f and oops, we haven't been moving things back down. Um, it also has one, it has this guy. So this goes up to strong and um, so I do five damage to each of the bandit guards. Wow. Okay. Do, do their shields do anything? Because they have a shield from their special ability. I mean, from their thing. Okay. So then I do four damage to each one. Okay. Four damage. Okay. And four. And then. Um, Oh, <laughs> okay. Never mind. I do five to each one because the other one. Wait, nope. Never mind. I use it as a move. Never mind. Okay. So first I moved one, and then I did that. So that gets put in my lost. I no longer have an ink bomb, and this goes here. But one of the two I drew was this, so I've got to shuffle my. Okay. Shuffle my thingy. And their their thing has a shuffle also, so I need to shuffle their thing. Okay. And then I think I have to do a short rest because I only have one card. Yes. Oh wait, I didn't give myself my, I finally get some experience. I got one experience for each of the people targeted. So that was two. Slowly learning. <laughs> but my tinkerer isn't very bright. <laughs> I only have four cards. Yikes. I've got three in my hand, but I'll need to do a short rest in this next round. Man, I don't know if I can survive the rest of the scenario with only four cards. You need to survive because I don't think that if you get exhausted that I'm screwed. <laughs> Okay, I've chosen. Okay, me too. 10. 16. Okay, and they have, the guards have 55. The archer has 29. Okay. Um, so the guard the guard card has a strengthen at the bottom. That doesn't take effect until it's actually their turn, right? I think so. Yeah, advantage on attacks. So that that's just when they attack us. Okay. I'm gonna um, I have a range attack actually. I'm gonna throw knives at this guy. 
Cool. What's your hit points, by the way? It's eight, eight right now. Okay. Um, so it's attack two. Oh shit, I can target two guys. That's what this means, right? Yeah, I think so. But it has to be a line in sight. So I'm gonna move first. Okay. One, two. So, okay, so how's line of sight work? <laughs> um, if any corner of yours touches any corner of theirs without going through a wall, or, yeah, without going through a wall. So if I so were to you, just off center with this, would the guy in back still be within line of sight? I think. Yep, yeah, yep. But the archer would yeah. not be. No, the archer is not in your line of sight. Okay, just that's what in I'm doing. My line of I'm moving to right next to you. Okay. And then okay. I'm throwing these two knives with attack two. So I, I draw one card for each guy, right? Yes, one card for each guy. Oh, wait, my range is only three. The guy in back isn't reachable unless I move forward. No, it's, he's, oh, no, you're right. So I am, I am going to be uh, right in front of you. Okay. And then one, two, yeah. So they're both within range. Okay. Um, okay, so the first card I draw is a plus zero. Um, so it's two plus zero, which is two. Um, that's it, right? Yep. But they already had four damage, so that's six. Yep, so this guy's gone. Goodbye. And then the other guy is also a plus zero. Okay, so he's also gone. Does th did their shield go away? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then I assume I just get one XP from that one attack. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. Oh wait, and then during your turn, I can use my minor stamina potion, recover up to two of my discard card. So this goes away. But I get my two cards back. Okay. Phew. <laughs> Cause we're we're about to be in trouble here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um what's your initiative? Uh, my 16. Okay, yeah, go for it. So, um, I am going to use, shoot. Oh, no, wait, I do want to do this. So I'm going to shield both of us. Each of us gets one shield. Okay. For this turn. And then... Are there shield tokens? Or we just have to remember that we have a shield? I see no shield tokens. I don't see any shield tokens either. I'll just put this up here for now. So I remember we all have shield. And then the other one, I because we're both at full health, I'm just going to attack two, but since there's nobody in range, I'm not doing anything. Okay. So there you have it. That was my turn. Okay, and then the archer moves. The archer has a move plus zero and a range plus one. Um, okay. Range is normally five. So it's not within range, so it wants to move. Its movement is normally two. And it's not going to move on the trap, so it'll go one, two. No, because it's got move minus one, right? No, that those are the guards. Move oh. Throw. Okay. Does it move on? It doesn't want to move on the trap, though. No, so it avoids the trap. Okay. 
and it's not within range of us, so it doesn't attack us. Okay. And then I have to I have to shuffle its cards again. Oh yeah, I'm doing I'm I'm doing the short rest too. Okay. Okay. Phew. All right. So we just have to get this archer. Seven, yeah. seven uh, health. I don't think I can't move within range of it. I think we should just let it come to us. That is oh, unless you, you maybe it's not you going to it's not going to come all the way to us though because it's got five range, so we're going to have to like. So if we if we duck around the corner, it won't be able to shoot us because it's not within the LOS. That's true. I mean, you have range stuff, so maybe you can attack it, but I don't think I can get within range to attack it. Ooh, I have, yeah, I've got something cool I can do that will help. Okay, I'm ready. Get in range. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, mine is 60, six zero. <laughs> mine is 72. Damn. And it's is 31, plus zero, plus zero on everything. Okay. So the archer moves first. It was two spaces. One, two. One, two, three, four, five. Shit. <laughs> but is it um, line of sight? Hmm? Is it line of sight? Yeah. And it's within range of me, so he attacks me. Okay. Sorry. Or she or whatever. It attacks me. Um with an attack of three. Plus zero. So I guess I take three damage. Yep. Sorry. No problem. Um, and you go. Be no, I go before you. You're seventy two. Yep, seventy two. Damn. Um, I'm going to move one, two, three, and then attack it with this throwing knife. Okay. Uh, which is attack of two plus one. So it's three. Um, and then this thing's still in effect, I believe. So it's plus two more. So that's okay. five total. And it has seven hit points. Okay. Okay. So okay. Alive, and that's my turn. All right, I'm going to start off by moving. Um, I'm only going to move three, but 
one, two, three, to right next to the door. Um, not in front of the door, but like to the left of the door. And then I have this, which is an attack of two with a range of three. Wait a second, hold on. One, two, three. Oh, wait, nope. Okay, so I'm actually in the doorway. And um, the archer, it's an attack of two and a pull of two. So I do no damage because yay because of this stupid thing. <laughs> but I pull it two forwards, so it goes one, two, like into the corner here, and we're both adjacent to it. Wait, it goes, where was it? Wait, where did... I thought it was like over on the side. No, it was like right in the middle. Oh, okay. Let me fix that then. Uh... Because it wanted to shoot me. Right. Okay, so then I only pull it forward one because then it crashes into you. So now it's just adjacent to you. Yeah. If it pulls forward twice and it hits me, does that do damage to both of us somehow? No? It, I don't know. It just, it it just, just doesn't work. Yeah. Okay. So I tried, but at least I got it close enough that you can stab it. Yeah. <laughs> Do you get XP for any of that? Nope. <laughs> but you do get you do get a coin for landing on a coin. I did get a coin. Yay. I get a coin. Okay, I'm ready. What are your hit points again? I have five right now. Okay. I think this card goes away because I did all four of those things. Okay, I am ready. Okay, yep. mine's a 23. 37. Okay, and it is 16. Dang. Minus one attack. So it goes first. Yep. Um, but it said it does advantage because it's right next to you. Yeah, but I think he wants to move one away from me and then shoot me. So he's no longer at a disadvantage, right? Oh, yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what he does. Um, okay. But his attacking me is only at two strength plus one. So he hits for three. Ouch. I'm at two. Ooh. Um, and my initiative was 23. What was yours? 37. Okay, so I am... Shit. Crap. Uh... I think I have to do I'm gonna do heal three on myself. Okay. And then that was the top, so I have to do this one. I can either move or attack nothing. <laughs> um Wow, that's sucky. Uh, 
I think I have to move back. I'm moving back. Okay. Out of its LOS. Okay. Um, all right, so I am also going to heal you for three. Yay. And then I was going to shield us, but I was too far back in the thing. So I am now going to move back also out of range. Which direction? Um, I'm going to go back one and to the left one. I might still be two, three, four, five. I'm still within range, but I'm like around the corner, I guess. Yeah, it would probably have to move like one, two. It would move to the doorway, I guess, or something. Or here. I think it could technically hit me. Yeah, it can technically hit me, but I'm at full health, so I'm not too concerned about that. Okay. Least. I'm doing a short rest. Okay. I am not. Dang. Some of these, I really want to play them, but I also want to save them for the last room because I'm nervous. <laughs> I only have three cards in my hand. Oh, Lordy. That's really bad. Is there any way to get these cards back? No, there isn't, right? Uh, you can if you get the right card, but I don't think either of us has the right card. Oh. Uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you might have to be finishing this on your own. Oh yeah, because with three cards, you're like one away from being exhausted, aren't you? Like one turn. Because you're about to be down to two cards to get them back. Right, right. Are you already down to two cards or no? I have three right now, but I'm about to pick two of them. And so oh, at the end of this turn, I have to do a short rest again, and then I only have two cards. And then I'll have to do... And then you'll be exhausted. exhausted. I can do a short rest, but I'll only get one card back, and then I'll be exhausted. Oh, no. <laughs> I only have two rounds left in me. OK. So we need to hurry up and kill this. <laughs> <I'm just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> I like, blew, my, blew these cards too early in the beginning of the game. Um, well, now we know. No, <laughs> Well, then I'm going to try to disarm. I'm going to maximize my experience points and disarm one of those traps, maybe. OK. That oh, would be yeah. helpful. Yeah. Oh, god. This is so bad. OK, I'm ready. Um. 17? 10. OK. What does she do? 29. OK. OK, so I'm going to move one, two, three. So I'm, can you see where it is? Yep. And then attack it. Okay. Uh, for two, I have a I have the throwing knives. Okay. Plus one, so that's three damage. I Which is plenty, and she's gone. Yeah. Phew. Okay. And I get an XP for that. And then for turn. All right. So 
I'm going to move four using this one. One, two, three, four. I can't attack a trap, can I? I don't think so. I don't know. Let's double check this. Um, yeah, so I can't, I can't do anything about that. So then I need to take out the trap, huh? That would be, that would be better, but if Otherwise, you, can, you just have to walk through it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and then I'm going to attack the nothing that I have. Okay. That's the end of my turn. Okay. I do a short rest. Jeez. Ugh. This is my last turn here. Yep. I'm ready. 23. Uh, 18. Okay. You go first. All right. So I'm going to summon a decoy, which means that I'm going to put this guy it right in front of me. OK. And he has a uh, movement of two and a uh, health of six. So at least I'll have a little bit of help. And I get two experience for that. And then I'm gonna move two around to the sort of behind where I put the trap. One, two, yeah, right there. And face the door since that's where everything horrible is about to go down. Okay. And that's it. So the decoy is on top of the gold? Is, is where the archer was, right? Yes, yes. OK. The decoy does not get to loot, though, just FYI. OK. Um, so I'm moving one space, I guess. Mm hmm And then disarming this trap. Cool. Thank you. That gives me two experience. Um, and now I you're exhausted. Now I'm exhausted. Yep. You are now exhausted. I need to do. Oh my gosh. Stop. I have all these random alarms. All right. So I'm doing a short rest because I'm down to just one card in my thingy. Yeah. It's okay. So what happens on exhaustion? I think you're just done. You fell over. You're taking a nap. Do I lose my goal or what? No, you hold on to everything. And if I am successful, then you get to keep it all. And if I'm not successful, <laughs> if I'm not successful, stuff is about to get wacky. Um, okay, so my my summons guy works like a monster. Um, I don't actually control him. He just goes with the, he just does the monster, like move towards a focus, um, which is weird because there's no monsters right now. So I don't know what he's going to do. And he moves directly before I do. So a summon, uh, the initiative order is all, always directly before the character who summoned it. Okay. So I am going to pick these two. It doesn't matter what the initiative is because there's nobody else in the room right now. So um, he's going to move. He gets to move two each turn. So he's going to move. Can he open a door? 
Can he open the door? Yeah, I'm not sure. Where's the door opening section? Oh, no, that's still a wall for him. So that's not helpful. He is decidedly not helpful right now. So he's just gonna move one because then the door is an obstacle for him. And I have, um, I guess, This is going to be super boring because I'm just going to move one and I'm attacking nothing. So I don't have like anything useful to use and I can't get all the way to the door. That was poor planning on my part. All right. So tell me where your things are now or does it matter? <laughs> Here. Can you see? I'm just going to get rid of this because we're not going to go back in that room. Goodbye, Ruby. Yeah. Or. Okay. So can you see where my, my guy's here? Yep, I, the guy I think here. so. And you're taking a nap? Yes, I'm okay, taking a nap. So, <laughs> so I'm just going to move one because I planned that really poorly. But I get this goal. Yep. And it's next turn already. That's terrible. That was poorly planned. OK. OK. So again, there's like nobody else here. Oh, he's super not useful because he's between me and the door and he goes before me. So I picked these two. Okay. So he just stays put because there's nothing for him to do. And I go one, two and open the door. And that uses that one. Okay. All right, now I've got to set up the door. The guys. I have to read something. Kicking oh, yeah. through the door, you find yourself face to face with the reason these bandits chose this particular hole to nest in. Animate bones, unholy abominations of necromantic power. Nothing more to do but lay them to rest along with the remaining along with the remainder of this troublesome rabble. So there's two, two skeletons and two archers. That's what I'm reading. Yeah, we're so not going to win this. <laughs> no, totally not. At least none of them are elite, but still. There's no way. And then I need one treasure chest. Where are the treasure chests? You would, no, you're a door. But uh, if we fail, we just come back, right? <laughs> Yeah, then we just go back to town without any of our stuff and... We do retain our XP though, don't we? I don't even know if we do that. I couldn't find a good answer about that. I cannot find any treasure chests. Are you a treasure chest? We'll call you a treasure chest because I have no one. idea. Somehow all my treasure chests are missing. Anyway, okay. So... I've opened the door and okay, the living bones. There's a bunch guy. of coins lying around. There are a Maybe bunch of can... coins lying around. I have to defeat all these guys in order to take home any of the coins. So are you sure you don't Am get I... any of the loot? No, you don't get any well it did it didn't say. It just said if you're successful you get to keep your loot. So I'm going to read this. I'm going to read it. <laughs> All right. So hopefully you can see what's going on here. So sex um, or failure. Players tally the experience. So you get XP. 
and you get the money tokens that you got. Assuming you're successful, right? No, it says success or failure. Where does it say that? Finishing a scenario on page 33. Oh, okay. Somehow I missed that and I... Um... But you don't get any perks. Like you don't get the check marks, the battle cards gotcha. don't trigger. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I moved to and open the door um, to I kind of need to, am I within range three? I am within range three. Okay, so um, I moved to, and I'm actually going to stay there even though I'm kind of scared to do that. And I'm going to do attack, this attack and poison. So um, I'm going to attack. Oh, wait, these guys need cards pulled too. Did you pull cards for oh, the yeah, skeleton? Yeah. And the so we got archer? skeleton and archers, right? Yep. No more cards. I think I finished my turn, but we still need their, what they're going to do. Yeah. The uh, um, skeletons are at 74. Okay. And the archers are at 68. Okay. So I'm still better than either of them. Um, all right. So I'm going to do um, attack two with a range of three at this skeleton guard guy. And. I get plus zero, so he gets poisoned, and he gets two damage. Oh wait, he has a shield of one, never mind, he gets one damage. And that is it, that is my turn. So now they go. Okay, so the archers go first, because they have 68. Yep. Um, who did you hit? I hit the this this one. Okay, one, you're gonna keep track of that stuff. Left. Yeah, I'll keep track of that. Okay, so the archers, um, they have right now they have range plus one and attack plus one. Mm. Okay. So their range is four, and their attack is at three. One, two, three, four. They're five away, so they each have to move closer to you. No, because you said range plus one? Yeah. Attack plus one and range plus one? So they're at range five. Yep. One, two, three, four. Oh, they're within range. Yep. So they don't have to move. Right. And they attack at three. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'll do this guy first, because it doesn't matter. Um, so he hits you for four. Dang. We're about to lose. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other guy does the same thing, and he hits you for five. Okay, and I'm now exhausted. And we lost. <laughs> Damn. That <was> nice. <laughs> uh, that's terrible. <laughs> We're bad at this. <laughs> well, now so we know now how to play. But well, we I get XP and stuff. Yeah, I made it out of there with four gold and four XP. So I only I got two gold and thirteen XP. That was terrible. I can't even like upgrade my character at all because that's not enough XP or gold to do anything. It's it's more than you think gold gold wise though. Each token represents something. Gold conversion. Yeah, what's the gold conversion rate? Scenario level one. Yeah. The golds were two. Oh, 
Okay, I've got eight gold then. That's fancy. Eight whole gold, which I don't think can actually buy anything. Let's check it out. 20, 20, 20, 30. Ooh, nope, I can't. I need a. Oh, I could do a minor healing potion in two more gold. I need two more gold in order to get even a potion. Wowzers. So this has been a horrible <laughs> first round of Gloomhaven. <laughs> We've to right. start yeah. over. Uh, let's see. Anything not looted is not collected. Players also recover all lost as card ability cards. Refresh all spent and exhausted item cards. Return your hit points to the maximum value. Reset all the decks and everything. All the battle goals are shuffled back into the battle gold deck. Um, if players are successful, which we aren't, if you're playing a campaign, successfully completing a scenario will also allow them to lose the conclusion flavor. We can't do that. Um, once a scenario has been completed in campaign mode, it cannot be undertaken again. So we can just do it again. Yep. But all the guys come back, right? Yeah, I assume so. Yeah, I assume so as well. Um, do you want to do it again, or do you want to quit for today? Um, I, I mean, I would like to do it again, but I don't, I don't know. How long has it been? Oh, it's been over two hours. Yeah, we should probably quit for today. Yeah. <laughs> So that I can go <laughs> like that <laughs> over yeah. two hours to not successfully complete the camp the scenario. <laughs> right, and now but now we know our characters. I'm actually thinking the next attempt maybe trying a different character. Oh yeah. What a different character would be like. I think I'm gonna stick with my character because I feel like I was starting to get the hang of it. I just made some bad decisions at the very end because I panicked, and. Um, like I probably should have opened the door and then backed up behind my construct because then they would have hit my construct instead of me right. with all of that damage. And, um, right. And that would have given me one more turn. Like, come, they would have had to shuffle over and you would have been able to handle each of them one by one, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. If I had just gone around the corner, that would have been a better plan. But instead I thought I could handle it. Which I couldn't. Right. Um, yeah, but I, I like the character because a lot of this stuff is like, like I can summon a decoy and then like there's a flamethrower that I just didn't get to use because I have to be adjacent to uh -huh. them. And um, there's a lot of like good, that kind of a thing. I was definitely playing to not use things up um ahead of time so like a lot of my stuff was you use it once and then you lose it forever so i was saving a lot of that stuff going into this um right trying to go into into the final battle but my hit points are so low i need like half a second to actually do those things <laughs> right yeah maybe yeah. i'll stick with this because uh she gained so much XP already. <laughs> yeah, how much XP did you get? 12? 13. 13, nice. Because of all these abilities and everything. Like, give you XP. Yeah, I think... Um, try again... Uh, next time. Yeah. I think, we, I think we can beat this because we kept panicking and then we kept being okay until you ran out of cards. So I think if you uh, you did more of the like moving to the, the ones that you don't have to uh, lose it, you could just discard it. I think that might help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, we forgot to play a road event. 
Oh yeah. We'll play the road event again uh, when when we ha come back from Gloomhaven. So we're we're going back to Gloomhaven. Do you want to do a, 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 a makeup road event right now? We could do a makeup road event right now, I guess. And then now that we're in Gloomhaven, we could do a city event if you want. Yeah, why don't we show that? So what happened in our road event? Okay, oh, wait, doing... we, the road event I think is only when you're going into a scenario. I know, but we could do it retroactively maybe. I think it has bad things that happen to you as part of the scenario, or maybe we're already set up for the next scenario. Hmm. Well, let's see what it was, <laughs> and then decide if we were supposed to do it or not. <laughs> I'm just going to read it, and we can decide if it was actually something we should, should have done. Okay. Um, you are trudging through some foothills when you hear the strangest sound in the distance. It sounds vaguely like wolves howling, but higher pitched, and there is a rhythm and a melody to it. You crest a nearby hill and survey the area, spying a pack of vermlings standing in a circle and singing. Singing is the best way you can think of describing it. Occasionally during the song, they also clap and dance around. Option A, the song must serve some nefarious purpose, attack them, or option B, move closer and enjoy the music. What are vermlings? Are they bad guys? They're like the little rattling guys. Like one of the characters you can be as a vermling, I think. Oh, well then we should listen to the music. Okay. Maybe they'll become our allies. <laughs> <laughs> Not wanting to disturb the ritual, you inch a little closer, staying out of sight, and then sit and listen. They go through a number of different tunes and you feel enriched by the experience. Gain three experience. Woohoo! And then so are we counting that? Destroy this. Like We're supposed to destroy game. it? Well, it's like you know, the card is no is out of the game now. So we're not gonna okay. get it. Well, at least we picked the right thing. Oops. So now I have seven whole XP. Woohoo. Okay, and now that we're in town, you wanna do a city event? Sure. And then we'll just I guess wait next till next week for the <laughs> For the next road event in this scenario again. Yeah. I want to see what this, um, the achievement, the militaristic, where is achievements? Okay. As far as I can tell, silly rule, city rule militaristic does not much. All right, ready? Yes. Uh, upon returning to the city after your latest adventure, you are approached by a high-ranking guard at the gate. Ah, good. I'm glad you have caught. I have caught you. The guard begins. The capital has fallen behind on shipments of wood to Gloomhaven, so now it falls on us to pick up the slack so that construction of the important city buildings don't, doesn't stagnate. The guard points to the east. We're forming an expedition to gather logs from the corpse wood. We could use your help, either to guard against enemies or to chop down trees. Option A, join the expedition as a guard, or option B, join the expedition as a logger. Um, Given that we just, like, were totally ruined. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe a logger. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. <laughs> okay. You journey out to the corpse wood, axe in hand, and begin chopping away at the trees. You seem to have a natural skill with it, probably due to all the practice you get swinging a blade. Thanks to your help, the city is able to gather a large amount of extra wood for construction. You encounter some dangers throughout the day, but nothing you cannot handle. Gain one prosperity. Woohoo! Nice. This goes, this goes back in the deck, it looks like. 
So just prosperity, that's not our reputation. Hmm? It's not reputation, it's prosperity. It says prosperity. What's prosperity? Um, that's the, it's along the bottom of the map, of the big map. Right. And that uh, determines how high of a level of a character when you create a new character you can do. Gotcha. So this is where we need the, the little sticker booklet, right? Yes. I mean, also for that militaristic rule, where did that go? City rule militaristic is also, we also get to use that. I got, gotcha. I have this thing, so I don't know, like, removable sticker set. Yeah, I have that too. I got it just in case. This thing. But it gives you like a whole other section. Um, Ooh, man. Because it gives, does yours also have like the location checklist and everything on the inside? Yeah. Yeah. So you could play it a second time. Right. Hi, May. I'm still doing a thing, but I'll be out soon. Oh, mine has extra seals and everything. I think this is for the second time you run it. Like I could reseal everything. All right, so. Are they expecting me to just mark these off on the bottom of the map? I don't know. I think so. Alright, I put city rule militaristic, and then... Oh, there's also the app. I mean, maybe, uh... I'm going to use the... I'm going to look at what the app has. Okay. Oh, these are definitely pretty removable, even the, the basic ones. Take it off. Okay. Oh my gosh, this is too much for my perfectionism. Trying to get it lined up perfectly. Are you going to put all your that or? These, no, this is stickers, kiddo. Oh. And they are not for you. Sorry. Oh, no, no, stickers. Yep. Why are these boxes? Parts of the game. Come back, have, in, come back in a little while, okay? Do they have something in them? Usually they do. Usually they have these in them. We should do a session next time where we play with small children. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna, I'm going to use this helper next time, this app. So I'll, I'll mess around with the app. So what were the two apps that you got? One's called Gloomhaven Campaign Tracker, and the other hmm. one Gloomhaven Helper. The Helper is the one that uh, you use while you're doing a scenario, and it does like instead of these decks to draw like you know their turn order, initiative, and all that stuff. It's just all in the app. Mm -hmm. oh, um, cool. And also the the uh, attack cards. It's all in the app, I think. And then the campaign. Or is like instead of marking up the board and all that stuff, you just do it in the app. Cool. So that's what I'm gonna try to do here. Enter campaign name. That was that Patik Patixi. That's our party name. Oh right. Anything. <laughs> Fatixi? 
the Tixie. Yeah, that's what you decided. <laughs> <laughs> our our naming strategy was a little uneven. Yeah, what's our campaign name though? It'll be Oh, I don't know. Mark and Melissa in the morning. Sure. <laughs> I'm gonna put the stickers as first campaign because I think it's so cool to have the stickers and get to show, you know, like see where you are in it. Okay. Whoa, so the Gloomhaven helper is five bucks. Oh, no, it was it was free on the Play Store, the Google, the Android Store. It is not free on, oh, but here's Gloomhaven utility. Yeah, this one's an enhancement calculator and character sheet. That's probably, there's a whole bunch of different ones in the, in the Apple store. There's even a scenario viewer and an attack deck. And one called Gloomy Tracker. It says it's the number one Gloomhaven companion app, but it's only got four stars and 14 reviews. So how can it be number one? Exactly. I will have to look into these. I could have loved the sticker idea though. Yeah. So I might just do the stickers this first time around. Okay. Um, and then use the tracker for later on. It'll feel like a sense of accomplishment, right? When we put the final sticker and X out the final scenario. That's true. Oh, I should do prosperity. That's weird to me though, that I'm supposed to X out with like a pen, the prosperity, that there's not a sticker for it. Uh-huh. At least I don't believe any of these are the stickers for it. Because those are enhancements. I'll use an erasable pen. Oh, Jesus Christ. How are you supposed to keep track of this? How many guys did I kill and how many guys did you kill? Um, I don't remember. One, two, three, four. There were six guys total that we killed. Yes. I wonder if I, I feel like I did initial damage on a bunch of them and you killed yeah. them all. All of them? No, I must, no. I think you killed them all. I think I did initial damage. There was those two guys, that guy. Are we supposed to get XP for killing things? N no. You just want to know how many you killed? Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you killed most of them. And Okay. Let's say I killed five of them. Okay. You're tracking way more closely than I am. Well, the app lets you enter in all your kills and stuff like that. Oh. I'll use that next time around. I'm only sort of fancy. I just scan in things.
Okay. I've got, uh, I just put Foxy in. You want me to put your character in too? Uh, no, that's okay. I've got my, I've got Tilo in a, on my fake paper. Okay. We can try again next week and hopefully do a better job. Because <laughs> we won't be figuring everything out at the same time, which I think was probably about half the problem. Yeah. And we'll see if my setup actually makes it to next week or if it ends up covered in Legos. Which is likely, actually. Okay, I think this campaign is set up now. Okay, so since I have the app, it seems like, or the campaign tracker app, it seems like we won't need the road cards or the city cards anymore because the app will just randomize what we draw. Oh, well. Okay, but then, but we already removed two, right? Or removed one? We removed one of them. The city one went back into the deck, I think. Okay. Um, So if we get that one again, then we just pretend. Yeah, I guess so. Um, let's see, we, which one was it? It's supposed to be, so the, the icon I mean, I'm not sure, but that icon to me looks like put put at the bottom of the deck. Yeah, I think that one's put it at the bottom of the deck. That was event number 24. And then the... Can you tell it which one we already saw? I'm trying to see if I can do that. Yep. So now okay. at the bottom of the deck. And then what about the road one, which was a rip up one, right? Yeah, the road one has been removed. Okay. Cool. This is going to take a really long time if it takes us two tries every time we have a scenario. <laughs> yeah, well, I think we'll, we'll do better next time. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have to do like a highlight reel, though, instead of like... Forcing right. people to watch us figure out how to play. <laughs> Either that or we should just start live streaming it or something instead. Yeah. Oh, there's one last thing. Yes. Yeah, I don't know how, I don't know what to do about that. I, I want to open it now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I feel like we haven't done much to deserve it in game. <laughs> well, but okay, we only have one life to live. Jeez. We might die before our next session. <laughs> deserve it now. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna open it. All right. Maybe it's just a uh, thank you for buying the game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
It's just unlock 76. Okay. And it says, are you brave enough to face the swarm? Which probably... No. We are not. <laughs> we are not. <laughs> we'll unlock that some other day. Unlock. Seventy-six. What does L two mean? Um, where it is on the map. Oh. Okay then. Mm -hmm. All right. Unfortunately, I need to go eat. Yep. So good okay. first attempt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next time we will be successful. Next time. Next time. Okay. We have to heal our wounds first. Anyway, cool. Thank you for playing. That was yeah, fun. Yeah, thank you. It was it good. Was frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, um, okay, I'm going to stop recording. Oh, yeah, that's probably a good plan. Yeah. We... Bye. Or I'm going to stop recording. We don't actually have to say bye.